Welcome back, Akron fans, to another exhibition match. This is the last one for tonight. It's going to be on Tomb of Heroes once again, beginning and ending with Tomb of Heroes. I remain Shadow Fury 63. We're going to be watching a game between Yarakun and Monkuki. So, let us begin. Monkuki, starting out, going to be playing Vekir, no doubt. And I'm sure that Yarakun is going to be playing Krekum. Yes, he is. Yarakun going for Krekum. And Monkuki, on the other hand, is. Monkey is, of course, going for Vekir. Why wouldn't he be going for Vekir? Monkey always goes Vekir. All right. I do that. Monkey always goes Vekir. Because that's... That's just him. He just does that. <sighs> Maybe that doesn't work as a way of doing things. Okay. I don't know. I'm trying to find ways of making it look a bit more cinematic. It's a lot easier in 0K than it is in Akron. Anyway. With Jerakun... Sorry. Monkey scouting out... He is going for a Foundation Rush. All three of his infantry forces are going straight into Jerakun's base. A foundation rush is forthcoming. Jerakun, on the other hand, putting his Arcticus forward and setting up his economy, basic, or setting up his triad duo. This is normal. Setting up his economy, nothing too major. Gonna get early Q-Plasma to get an early Octopod for defense. Which, against a foundation rush on a map this large, is gonna work. There's no doubt about that. This is going to work. Now, Monkey, on the other hand, well, he's... Oh, I see. We went blue time wave, right? Yeah. I had to carry things over. Probably trying to get this as soon as he can acronally. Keeping tabs on what his units are. And yeah, like I said, there's the foundation. Foundation rush incoming. But j Raccoon will have an Octopod in time. There's the Octopod at the 107 mark. And... Monkey's units are not going to be able to make it in any decent amount of time for how far they're going. They're going to be making it around the... Be right. The 55 second mark. Not that range. Okay, I don't know what that is giving me a timing for. Anyway, with that in mind, Monkey is being spotted out. Jericho is fully aware of this foundation that's happening, but he's already prepared for it. He's already gotten the defenses set up. There's nothing he needs to do. Really. Honestly, at this point, just wait. Basically. Wait until Monkey just loses his units to flinging themselves at a wall. Because that Octopod, that's going to get rid of everything. I mean, the Octopod, it needs to be in range, though. It needs to make sure that it's actually up here when the Foundation Rush happens. That is the one thing. So Jericho's going to need to pay attention. He needs to know when the Foundation Rush happens, where it happens, where the first Foundation is being placed, and kill the Shinbeer before that can happen. That's very important. If that doesn't happen, then Jericho has lost the game. But Jericho is not going to lose the game. Because he has enough units to stop this. In fact, he's already stopped it. The Shinbeer first to go. Tethbeer's and Zangir follow afterwards. Jerakun has not lost the game. Not by a long shot. Monkey has not necessarily lost the game either. He can echo this out. He probably will too. He is keeping his, his Zangir at base. He's going to use these guys as scouts. He's not going to be able to successfully get the Foundation Rush. He's not focusing on that. He's echoed that out. Long since echoed. Focusing on using the Shinbeer and Tethbeer for scouting, if anything. And... Zion Veer, back at base, just building up. In fact, Monku can build a couple resource processors at this point. He's probably just not focusing on that. He will, though. Akron being Akron means just go to the time when you have ADLC and build a resource processor. You don't have to worry about being on the ball Akronally. It's nice to. It's not a bad idea to, but you don't necessarily have to be. Anyway, Jericho on the other hand, what is he up to? I would almost expect a counterattack, but I don't know. I would actually... No, I wouldn't expect a counterattack. Counterattack would be a dumb idea. Because Monkuki has clearly echoed out what he's doing. So Monkuki could easily build defenses up. I mean, Jerakun might expect that Monkuki will do what he does, as we saw in the All of Stone Pass game, that Jerakun seems to like to go for echo attacks, using them to cover for economic expansion. If he does that, well, that could be very interesting. But he might assume that Monkuki does that. However, I don't think Monkuki does do that. And that being said, no, Monkuki is getting defenses up. He's getting a pretty quick depot. He did echo that attack out, but he's not leaving himself defenseless in the meantime. He's got a depot up. He's assuming, I guess that Jericho's assuming that he's going to have the economy and therefore not having the economy says so he has depot, just in case Jericho goes for a counterattack, and therefore being prepared for the counterattack that may happen if Jericho assumes that Monku he thinks like Jericho does. Assuming that Jericho does think the way he seemed to think given the All of Stone Pass game. I think. That being said, Monkey does have this up, so he's fine. 
He is going to be able to defend pretty well, here, getting his Iron Pulsar up. In fact, Jericoon doesn't have an Octopod. He echoed out the production of the Octopod. And he does have the Q Plasma for it. But as we saw in the Yellowstone Pass game, he, he seems to like to delay that production somewhere. He defers it a bit. He has it at the start, just for defense, just in case. And if he doesn't need it, he keeps everything. He keeps the LC, he uses it for RPs, and he's doing exactly this right now. And it looks like he actually has an Echo Attack happening. Yeah, these Octas here, in the present, this is an Echo Attack, by the way. So he is actually expanding undercover for Echo Attack. It wasn't just the Yellowstone Pass game, it wasn't just a fluke. This is what he does. Mon Cookie is... Not sure if he's well aware this is an Echo Attack. He does have the Zion Pulsars here. He might just go for a Counter Attack, thinking that he can kill it on timing. And he'd be right, actually. If he goes for an Edge Attack, an Edge Attack with Skip Teleport right now against what Jericoon is building, especially since Jericoon is echoing that attack out. I'm pretty sure he's echoing it out. Looks like he is. He wasn't really... Looks like he hadn't invested in it very much, although we'll see. There's a fair amount of production right here that... Nope, that was definitely an Echoed Attack. So yeah, Mon Cookie, if he goes for a Counter Attack, thinking maybe timing, he would be right. If he's thinking echoing, he'd be very right. So if he does attack right now on the edge, he will take this game pretty easily. Although Jericho could rebuild a bit, but yeah, if he attacks, oh, right now, oh, this would be per no, not quite. Has to wait a bit. The red time I've just passed the Impulsive past edge, but didn't quite pass the time when the Zion pulses were in the optimal position. So it's might have to wait for the blue time I've to pass the Impulsive past edge in order to make that work as effectively as possible. It's yeah. Playing with the interface in this game can be... Playing against the interface in this game can be really weird. Because there's certain things, optimal timings that come up based on the positions of the time waves relative to the Amplio Past Edge, and thus relative to that time wave that's... That blue... See the little blue thing here? That's a time wave on the Amplio Past Edge. So where the Amplio Past is, it propagates orders so that edge attacks aren't as effective. It nerfs edge attacks, but they're still powerful if you... Still moderately powerful if you do them right when a time wave a natural time wave passes by because yeah it's propagating on here but this is moving at one time speed so it's not giving your opponent any time to respond they're aware of what's happening but they can't actually deal with it without fast forwarding themselves or waiting for a natural time to do it however the blue time wave is just about to cross that edge and i think monkey is going to take advantage of that timing once it comes up just waiting for that to happen and i think once that happens he's going to attack or as close as possible once the blue time wave crosses here this is when the attack is going to happen Assuming the attack is going to happen now. Come on, have an attack. There it is. There it goes. Right as the blue time of cross is over. Now, Monkuki just, there we go. Needs to pause, jump out of there, just to make sure that attack happens on the edge. Very nicely done. Textbook edge attack right there. Now, at the same time, he does have an aerial control center. He is getting a depot up. Jericoon, on the other hand, getting a spire, getting reefs. He does have chronoporting as well. So he's not defenseless, but he doesn't have the best position, especially since that edge attack now happening, as you can see, is dropping off in the Implevel Pass edge. Jericoon just seeing what's happening. He is going to fast forward. He's going to pull it as far into the present as, or into the Implevel Pass as possible. But there is still a huge Chrono Energy Premium on dealing with this. Monkuki getting rid of a couple of the QPRPs. This is this is a big deal. Jericoon was relying quite a lot on Chrono Porting, and one of the Octopods will be able to get rid of his Eye Impulsor, but not before looks like about three of these. Oh, one of the Faros goes down. Yes, three of the RPs are going to go down in the meantime. Possibly more. That Octopod is not in range. Jericho has to just now move it in range. He has barely enough front energy to do so. And it looks like... No, he's not. In fact, free attacks for this Zion Pulsar. Monkuki is going to completely shut down Jericho's chronoporting game that he was planning on doing. Now, Jericho still has a bit of a chance further in the future once chronoporting is done to chronoport back and deal with this. But he hasn't done so, and... He does have the Q Plasma to deal with this, but once the green time comes along, it's not going to work. Monkuki does have this going in here. Good luck going for him, actually, with this. He does have this RP going down. And Chrono Porting appears to be delayed. In fact, Chrono Porting has been cancelled. Jericoon has to... Actually, the green time is not going to be a problem. The green time doesn't carry the Chrono Porting destruction, I don't think. But Jericoon has to Chrono Port now. Pause now. Chrono Port now. Don't even pause. Just Chrono Port. There he goes. Does exactly the right thing. Chrono Port's back. Deals with these Zion Pulsars. Still loses one RP. But that's two RPs, mind you. Oh, that's still going to be pretty big. This last Zion Pulsar won't manage to kill the third RP. And I think... I think Jericoon has a chance. I think Jericoon might be able to get Chrono Porting still, but I'm not sure. Monkey Gober did manage to deal a lot of damage. He's 
Not entirely aware that his attack was stopped from the looks of it. However, back at his base, he does have... Well, he is building up. He was expanding. He'd expand in the north. And that's a good thing to do. Jericho, on the other hand, while under attack, has managed to stop this. But his chronoporting is delayed. Not stopped, but has been delayed by about 30 seconds. Which, given the fact that... Actually... Oh, no. He, see, here's the thing. He needs to get it up before this chronoport happens. Right now, there is a paradox. There is a paradox, people. He, Jericho needs to get chronoporting ASAP. His next order has to be getting chronoporting in order to have a chance to have this Farpod go back and save himself to allow him to get chronoporting. But right now, it's not even Paradox Country, it's just negative feedback loop. Chronoporting is just not going to be available. Jericho has to get chronoporting. Ah, he's not getting chronoporting. This is too late. I'm pretty sure this is too late. He, yeah, it's going to take another minute here. It's going to get here. He has to chronoport back to about here ish. And by then, his Q plasma has already been removed. It's already done, and Monkey just went and made that even worse, or the fact that it's got there, I should say, he didn't go back and make it worse, it just so happened to be worse already. This is the attack that would have happened were it not for the chronoporting. The chronoporting actually getting cancelled, see on the timeline where Monkey was, that chronoporting attack, or chronoporting research got cancelled due to the lack of funds. 217, you need, I think, 250 or something like that. Anyway, I, I, memorize, I had this memorized. I feel bad about this. Oh, yeah, and of course, he has to just not have it available. But yes, it doesn't matter though. Monkey has taken this game. Jericho did not get chronoporting in time, and he tried certainly. He does have Firepot here. Actually, he's gonna try once again, but it's not gonna be it's not gonna work. He's not gonna get chronoporting in time for that Firepot to chronoport back. Although I was slightly wrong. It looks like Paradox Country is in fact where we have entered. A little bit surprising there, but it doesn't matter. That Firepot is gonna go down to the Shin Turcher, and there's really not much more to be said. That Shin Turcher is gonna take care of the rest of the base. No Sebi's in play. No Sebi's standing up at least. There's this one on the ground that's progen mode, but that's about it. And at the same time, 713, Monkwiki actually can't do anything. This is unplayable pass, by the way. This is all the unplayable pass. Jericoon throws in the towel. That is game. And nice use of timeline. Very nice. That textbook edge attack. My goodness, I am so glad I caught that. Because that that thing that Monkwiki did there with the edge attack, that is how you do an edge attack. And Jericoon, he did a good response to it. It's just he needed to get chronoporting ASAP. As soon, as soon as he had playable pass, as soon as he had any Chrono Energy available, he needed to get Chrono Porting that exact instant in order to have a chance to get that Fire Pod back in order to save the Chrono Porting. That's what he had to do. And he didn't do that. And that, well, didn't. I mean, he. Monkey already bought himself quite a lot of time. Not sure if it would have given Jericho in the game, but would have at least helped out a bit. Anyway, that is going to be it for me tonight. So I hope you. And. Thanks for watching. Have a good night, everyone.